Howdy folks, it's Thursday and uh, we're doing Viver today. Yay, we're doing a Viver Sandblaster box. It's kind of a bench top sandblaster and I'm gonna have quite a bit of opinion and discussion over all this, but uh, the sandblaster is here from Viver and we're gonna, apparently we're gonna have to put it together. So we'll assemble it and then we'll check it all out. And like I said, I've got a few tips I guess I'll share with y'all. Okay, opening the box, this is the first part that came out so far. This is the uh, the top. Now, the first thing I noticed was a couple of things about this build. I have an expensive sandblaster in my barn that I've been using, and it's an old one from Atlas from years and years and years ago. And this right here from Atlas was not good. This one's from Vivor, and they've got a really nice heavy gasket here, a little bit heavier metal top and stuff. So. It's already starting to look like uh, tough tools for half price, you know. Viver's been around for a long time. They, they make and sell a lot of stuff and tools. And they spec it out with their name on it. Their brand name is on their stuff, so that's always a good thing. So I've always uh, sort of enjoyed the Viver stuff because it, it saves you money and can get you some tools that you want. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of the Harbor Freight Online kind of thing. So, you know, it's, it, it is what it is. So anyway, we will continue unpacking. <laughs> Wow, and, and then I've got to get the nuts and bolts out of here, and I'll bet this is all full of hardware. There's a lot to put together. <laughs> I'm going to get it all out of the box. We'll put it on the bench, take a quick look, and then let's. And then I'm going to do the magic thing and uh, assemble. Like yeah. always, real quick, like always, uh, I've just what I did here was I just laid all the parts out of the box. And as you can see, with the sandblaster, even you get a lot of stuff to put together. A couple of things came with this that I'm I'm sort of I'm sort of liking. It's got a nice light kit. It also has uh, some gasket glue stuff to put together, which is one of the big things I had problem with the Atlas was it leaked everywhere in every corner uh, after it was assembled. So this one here, you can put the gasket goo on there. Apparently you can seal this box up really good as a bench top. So it's gonna be a surprise, but uh, yeah, we'll uh, tell you what, I'll, this is Wednesday. I'm gonna start assembling this thing so we can have a show for Thursday. <laughs> Cause I'm sure this is gonna take uh, a good chunk of my day to Put this together lots of nuts and bolts yep lots of parts yeah wow i can still smell that fresh paint Whew. anyways yes we're done we got it together we're, we're ready to go now there's as far as uh assembly goes uh there's a lot of tricky parts here that the manual doesn't really give you good information so you have to really slowly pay attention to each and every part you put together and i'll be honest i've already got one of these and it took me hours to build this one now the one i have is by atlas tool company but i measured up checked the parts the atlas one is probably 15 years old and it's the exact same thing i've got right here but from vivor and of course the atlas was i think it was around 300 dollars at the time so vivor one is the same model same everything and a lot cheaper so yeah but there's some features here that are actually better than the atlas so I want to cover, I guess, a little bit, a few points about that too, but you also get several different tips for your, your gun, for the blaster, which is typical of these machines, but uh, they've also got this one here. Now, this is a window taped into, that's a window taped into a window, and you get three extra ones, shields, because over time, uh, you're going to tear all this up with the uh, blaster, with the sand, uh, we'll call it sand blaster. Because what really goes in here is medium. We call it medium, yeah. Uh, so do not go down to the beach and get a couple buckets of sand. Okay, yeah, don't do that, yeah. Medium-wise, uh, I'll leave a link in the description below, uh, an affiliated link for, with Amazon of the medium that I use. But I recommend that because I have tried different grits and I really quickly found this particular bench model uh, likes the fine stuff. It doesn't like the medium or uh, larger grain type uh, stuff for, you know, blasting with the fine seems to work the best also it uh, second to that was the compressor uh the P the psi the air pressure from the compressor makes a difference the the finer grit uh is easier to move around with the uh compressor and, and that's the other thing of course if you're going to get one of these machines you better darn well have a good compressor like the beast over here uh, you should have something that can really produce some pressure. Hopefully something with a decent, like a 60 gallon tank, 80 gallon tank, maybe even bigger, whatever, but something that has good 
uh, back up for pressure because the gun is going to use a lot of air pressure and what it's doing is it's actually picking that grit, that, that sand like grit up through a tube and blasting it at whatever it is in order to sand it down and you know get the rust and clean up the material and stuff. I'm going, to do, I'm going to try to explain a little bit about this because I've got an Atlas machine here, same machine, but it's older and it was more expensive. And I'm going to show you what makes this one actually better than my Atlas, you know. So, yeah. uh, the very first thing I noticed, I'm going to come over here, is, is this right here. Uh, the Atlas, the gloves are on the short side and you have trouble reaching the part, holding the part and blasting at the same time. Uh, Viver's unit, for some reason, comes with really nice, long, rubber, uh, good rubber gloves for holding the parts while you're, you know, blasting. Uh, also, the gun itself is on, it's on a little bit of a longer tube for some reason. I've got a little bit more gun here. With the Atlas, I can't even, I can't even do that. I can't bring the gun up out of the machine. You've got very little gun room or movement, so a lot of times you have the part you hold the gun, you're, you're blasting away, and you're having to hand manually, you know, move the part. You have got only a little bit of wave with the gun sort of thing to clean. So that's kind of uh, strange because I would have expected the Atlas actually would have been the better machine, even though it's a lot older. Uh, the other thing is the light in here is better than the one that came with the Atlas. And again, I think that reason for that was, uh, I think it's just technology. The uh, Atlas machine, uh, that was kind of early LED lighting. This is LED. Just turn that on and it's got a really nice, look at that, nice strip lamp at the back here which will help you to see your parts. Uh, mine is so bad, the Atlas is so bad right now, I can't even see the parts anymore so I just sort of do it by hand and feel around with the gloves and try to make a plan as to how I'm going to rotate the part through until I get all the uh, sandblasting or whatever done. Now the fine grip is what I recommend because there's a bunch of reasons and one is the fine grit doesn't seem to get caught up in the tip of the gun here. It doesn't seem to jam. Oop, that's actually loose. Wow. Uh, you get three of these tips, like I mentioned before, earlier, and also three of these shields. And I highly recommend be really careful with the shield because uh, when this gets bad and you decide to change it, somehow you got to peel this thing off and then you're going to have, you should clean this first uh, with, uh, you know, clean it down real good first before you and dry it and everything before you try to put the sticky, you know, to put this, the new shield in place because that was a mistake I made. Uh, I tried not to clean too much and then I went to put this on and it wouldn't stay and then it fell while I was blasting all of a sudden I got, my shield kind of got ruined a little bit. So the machine's not in good shape anymore. You sort of, like I said, you sort of fly, fly blind a little bit with this when you're in there, but it's, it's fine. It is what it is. The next thing about the Atlas I didn't like was uh, the tray on the bottom. This tray here is like a hopper. It's got four sections all dropping to the center where you can pick up your medium uh, to go through your gun. The Atlas had a elongated uh, hopper in the center and what that does is the sand uh, settles across the bottom evenly or somewhat evenly until all of a sudden you run out of sand. You've got lots of material in here but it's not picking anything up and you have to kind of shake the machine around a little bit to get it around. Now, another, another quick tip of the day too. <laughs> yeah, here it comes. See if I can find the other one here. Yeah, there it is. Uh, they give you these plugs and you get two of them actually. This goes in the bottom of your hopper, which is in the bottom here. Do not put this from the outside in. You put it from the inside out this way. Now the reason for that is because you are introducing 100 pounds of air pressure, whatever, at whatever volume coming into this machine. That air pressure means this inside this machine is sort of like filling up like a balloon and trying to, you know, blow everything out. So if you pop this in from outside, it will pop off and then all your medium will spill out and you will have a beautiful mess on your bench to clean up. <laughs> that will really, and you'll need some special words that you use as you're uh, cleaning up that mess. Now, the other thing that uh, was uh, different from the Atlas was like, I think I said it earlier, was this this right here. Uh, for some reason, the Atlas one did not come with that. Uh, it had a very, very small, you know, kind of rubber gasket that didn't hold well. So you ended up with sand coming out all over the place. So that's the very next thing that I highly recommend. Even if, even if you get the Viva machine, okay, even if you buy the Viva machine, what I did with mine is I mounted it on a roll around uh, desk. Uh, just a little cabinet that's a little bit bigger than this and fastened it to the top and it's on wheels and I roll it outside in the driveway. Then I put a dust mask on 
and I check the wind and I'm always what they call upwind of the machine so that anything coming off of this is blowing away from me because those sand particles are, it's basically like silica. It's really bad for your health. You don't want that. You don't want to be breathing it. And this, these machines I have found always have a certain amount of uh, nasty leakage. So even though this is a bench model, I would highly recommend put it on something portable and take it outside and use it and try to get upwind of whatever's going on that way you know, and wear a good dust mask and, and just don't breathe that crap in. Because even though this is a brand new machine and I've sealed all the corners up, it still has a tendency to, you know, they are probably, it's probably going to leak. Um, it's a brand new machine, but it'll probably leak. You know, the sand will come out of there. And the other thing that happens too, a lot of times is you're, you just finish the job and you stop with the air pressure and everything. And you, you put, you get your hands out of your gloves and you unlock and whip this open and all the powder is almost like smoke virtually vapor comes flying out of there in your face again you do not want that so uh, i'm just giving you some crazy safety pointers uh, from experience yeah you know things that went wrong now vivor did did include uh, this uh, gray gasket maker jelly which uh, i put in the corners as it says in the instructions and you really just sort of like caulking, you know, finger it and go into the corners and try to seal up all the corners and everything. I don't think you can make it. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work, but it's going to help to keep the stuff inside the machine and not flying around. But these are, uh, I'm just going to say, these are just messy machines. That's all they are. You know, any of them. I don't care whose model, who's, who's make, you know, they're, they're slightly, they're just messy. And uh, so uh, it's just one of those things, be prepared to deal with. If you haven't had one before, I guess uh, take it outside at least and get a dust mask. Wear a dust mask. Yeah, while all this is closed up and these are locked and everything else, wear a dust mask because they're just they're just that bad. You know, they, it's a uh, you know you're blasting sand and there's a lot of ways that that sand can come out of there or even get in your face. And I just I'd rather you guys be safe and enjoy whatever it is you're doing or working on. Now the assembly, like I said, was ours. Yes, uh, there was a lot of uh, little things. The instructions are. Because I've already had one of these machines, the instructions are, I guess I'm gonna say they were good enough for me to get through. But I think if it was your very first machine, I think it might be a little frustrating because there were certain things like, there's a little uh, tight, dust tight fitting here for the cable for this LED light. And they really don't get into it in the instructions here. They show, you know, they don't really show you uh, detailed instructions about installing that. But you need to put that on with your cable coming out the back side here to where your switch is because you want to keep the dust away from the switch. Yeah, you know, electrical switch, you know, yeah. So little things like that uh, were kind of lacking. Uh, there was really no explanation to these other than, you know, that they got to be put on tight, obviously. The chain is a little bit longer than I thought it should be, but that's okay. It, uh, the further this is back, the easier it is to get parts in and out of. Now, uh, if you're thinking about like a, a mag wheel, I'm going to tell you right now, this machine is too small. You need something bigger than this to do a mag wheel with. You could, uh, you could go ahead and do a small one, maybe, but uh, I have tried mag wheels and you know, it, it's just not big enough machine for that. You need a, the larger unit. Uh, the other thing was, uh, if you do need more space, I have done something which they don't recommend, of course, and that's to take the tray out the bottom of it, which means the item you've got is gonna be sitting right down in the sand as the sand is going down. Now the collector for this is kind of uh, funny because it's just a steel tube, lays in the bottom and the sand, it picks up the sand and brings it through. But one of the tricks I did have was with the gloves. A lot of times with the glove on, I would actually just put it in front of the gun for a second and just feel. And you could feel the sand actually hitting your fingers like on these rubber gloves. And you go, yeah, it's definitely spraying sand so uh trust that it is you know uh, the other thing was the uh, <clears throat> this was uh the air fitting on this putting the air fitting together i didn't use what came with the kit again because well you know let's see if we can get this turned around there's the uh air fitting i put on this is uh actually it was the only one i could find in my toolbox at the time but I put a quick connect on this side. So you have, you should have some air fittings around ready because let's face it, most shops are probably like me, they're gonna have a quick connect for your airline. So this way I can quick connect to the machine and then of course start using it. I have the same thing as this on the Atlas machine that I already have in my shop. So it's the same, it's the same idea. 
Uh, the hinges up here, they don't seem to leak air, so that was cool. This filter system here uh, allows the pressure to remain low so that you're not trying to push and force pressure into the machine when you're blasting. I don't know if that, you know, the, the physics of that make any sense, but you are trying to introduce large cubic feet of, you know, air into a, a box that, that's enclosed. So in order to I'll take that pressure away, uh, they've got a filter here. This is not an air filter to keep, you know, keep you happy or something. It's really part of keeping the pressure inside the machine low so that it can handle air pressure coming in and volumes of air coming in and it just releases it here. This is still, and it's a filtered system to help keep the dust from flying out, but you still are gonna get some really weird nasty powder stuff coming out of here. Again, you know, if you have a dust mask on, all the better because this can get a little bit nasty too coming out of there. But the instructions again were not very clear about installing this, but it's you sort of get when you look at it, you sort of get the idea. There's like a rubber ring and then a compression type, uh, like a large washer that pulls towards the inside of the body of the machine, holds everything in place. But I, I just didn't like the explanation in the book. There's a couple of places in the book where you're going to run into it where it's just going to say, yeah, and attach it. And you're just like, how? You know, uh, the other thing to watch for is the screws. If you pick up your screws and you get your screw packs out like this and you read them sort of carefully, you can sort of break it down. Uh, light clamp, screw and nut, nut, uh, light clamp. Yeah. Screws and nuts. So that was the piece back here that holds that light in place. Now there's a hole back here for a ground. I'm just gonna put a bolt in it, I guess. I'm not sure, uh, it's for static or something, I guess. They, they You can ground the machine. Uh, again, I don't see any reason for it because I'm gonna take it outside of the driveway and use it. I am not using it in my shop. Uh, been there, done that, try that. No, I highly don't recommend it. I've talked to lots of other people, enthusiasts that have these type of machines and they all agree the same thing. Yeah, get it outside someplace and get away from it, you know, while you're gonna use it because it is gonna be nasty. Uh, and again, here's uh, here's another one, lamp, uh, lamp clamp, cross, screw, and nut. Two pieces, you know, uh, door handle, nut, and uh, M812 insert, which is this right here. But you sort of have to translate a little bit with this stuff. It's not bad. It's not real bad. There's the thing that they gave me for the airline, which again is useless because I, like I said, I use Quick Connect. Uh, there's uh, a bunch of nuts and bolt hardware that was left over. Uh, they gave you more than enough to put everything together. So that's a good thing. There's the cabinet screws and nuts, cabinet cross screw and nut, you know, hinges, self-tapping screws, you know, so it's pretty, you know, if you read these labels, it's kind of obvious what's going on. But when you get into the manual and you see pictures like they just show you putting the gloves in there like whatever, you know, uh, there's clamps supplied to put these gloves on with to clamp them down in place on the inside. The gloves are actually fitted on the inside. Again, it doesn't show in the picture at all. So a lot of things are kind of left to your imagination. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, so I, I'm not real thrilled with that part, but this is typical. And, and here's the other thing too, it's interesting. Uh, like, like I mentioned, the uh, Atlas was the exact same machine. Is it's here? You know, it's it's red, but it's the same machine. It's exact. Every all the parts identical almost. Uh, and yet the cost difference is huge. But I will say this much: uh, the Atlas leaks horrible, but it came pre-assembled too. It came from Atlas in a box that was already like this. You know, it, there was nothing to put together. Uh, in some ways, I think Beaver did a better job here because it has a better gasket here, but it also had a really good gasket on the bottom. And they also give you that gasket maker stuff to seal up your corners with and stuff. And see, my Atlas machine never came that way and it has always leaked horribly. Now, I still expect there's going to be puffs of smoke or leakage or whatever out of this machine, but uh, I'll, sh I'll show you what's going to happen. I'm going to hook this up to 100 plus pounds of air pressure off of that compressor. I'm gonna fire the gun off and we'll just see if we see anything like this will actually rise up because there's so much pressure and that's one of the reasons why you have this like, this filter here is like a relief valve for pressure. Yeah. Okay, what I'm gonna do here right now is I'm gonna fire the gun off on the inside of the machine but what I want you to watch is the top of this glass and you'll see how you're introducing pressure into the box itself. So here, check this out when I hit the gun. 
I don't know if you can see that, the, the glass is actually raising up. And the reason for that is because you're introducing so much pressure inside. Okay, I just wanted to give you a quick inside look. And this is that open angle area of your, your cage. So your, your line is going to go down through there, and there's your pickup tube. The steel tube is going to lay down in there with the uh, sandblast material, or media, as they like to call it. There's, there, there's your gun. And so you can sort of see how it's all hooked up and goes together on the inside. And there's that crazy filter that's kind of like a pressure relief valve or whatever, plus the light. Okay, so who's this for? <laughs> or what's it for? Well, any automotive steel structural work, anything like that where you want to clean up rust or even sometimes uh, just re really heavy built up gunk on a car part or something, a lot of times a blaster like this can do a tr the trick. Now the other thing that I did last year, I went to yard sales and picked up old iron, you know, cast iron frying pans and stuff. They were nasty, but I ran them through one of these and you could resell them like almost brand new, but they're really clean so people will have will pay top dollar because the, the iron frying pan looks brand new like it just came off the shelf and that was the difference you could pick them up at a yard sale for a dollar but people would offer you 10 20 50 dollars for the pans depending on of course you know what type of pan uh, but this did a fantastic job of cleaning that sort of thing up now a uh, quick word about the uh, the grip I, I like I said fine I go with fine don't don't buy medium uh, if you do, you're on your own, okay? <laughs> no, you're, you're, you're the uh, operator error, whatever. But uh, I buy fine, is what I use in my machine. And it's uh, just a black oxide, uh, aluminum oxide, I think they call that. And it goes through really well. It's, it's you know, it, it is what it is. There is silica in some of this stuff, so you gotta really watch what you buy. Uh, also, I bought, I'm trying to remember how many pounds it was, and I ended up using basically the whole bag, but again, this one would be more efficient because it has a better hopper design. So you could probably get away with, you know, 20 pounds or something of the, uh, of the stuff in here, where the, uh, one, the Atlas I have, it took easily close to 40, 50 pounds of stuff. And it was like, I still feel like, felt like I could buy another bag of the stuff, you know, but uh, yeah, I got into a real mess with that. Cause a couple of times I had to dump the machine, empty it all out, get all the media, media out of there and switch it to a different grit size because I discovered the medium and the uh, coarse grits and things. Also, the numbers on that, uh, a medium grit runs somewhere between uh, 60 and 80, you know, the uh, real coarse ones, sometimes they'll run 40 to 60, sometimes up to 80. Uh, the fine that I'm talking about is running around uh, 150, uh, 220, you know, up in that range of grit. And it does get confusing, oh yeah, because they don't all sell it with the same idea as to what the grit is on the, uh, on the uh, me media. Yeah, media. It's a terrible thing to call it media. I wish they just call it sandblasting, sander, I don't know, whatever. Anyways, thank you for watching Coffee Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell. We were going to do a giveaway today. I'm, I'm just about, I've run out of time. Maybe Monday we can get that closed off because I've got some more tools to give away. Jesus. Okay, I'm out of here. Over and out.